Mudassir, thanks uh, for being with us. It's great to have you back on uh, Al Arabiya. Before I ask you about the latest addition to the super app, uh, let's discuss uh, your performance uh, in the region last year and uh, in Q1. Are we back to pre-COVID levels? Hi, Lara. It's a pleasure to be uh, on the channel again. Uh, the business, has, uh, as, as you know, is, uh, has recovered quite uh, strongly. And uh, overall, uh, we have done quite well and above pre-COVID levels. But at the next level, uh, the story is a bit different in different countries and different uh, businesses. In some uh, countries, we are still uh, below pre-COVID levels, uh, but in others, uh, we, are, we are ahead and we're quite far ahead. So overall, uh, doing quite well and uh, racing uh, to get everything above uh, pre-COVID levels as soon as possible. In the UAE, are you back to pre-COVID levels? In the UAE, as you know, uh, Lara, we, we have uh, the full suite of the Super App uh, active, uh, especially in Dubai. If you open the Super App in Dubai, you will see that there are 12 services on the Super App, including mm -hmm. our most re recent edition, uh, which is a rental car service. We have food delivery, we have grocery delivery, we of course have cars and taxis, we also have payments. So when you add it all up, uh, UAE is well above uh, pre-COVID levels because the suite of offerings on the Kareem app is way larger than it was before COVID. Let's discuss this uh, latest addition to the super app, and that is the digital payments. Uh, can you help us understand what's the market size uh, in the region and what's your, t or in the UAE specifically, because you're launching this in the, in the UAE, and what's your uh, targeted uh, market share? Yeah, so look, uh, you know, as you, as you know, Kareem's uh, purpose uh, from day one has been to simplify the lives of people in this region. And over the last uh, seven, eight or 10 years rather, we have been mainly focused on logistics. First, we were simplifying lives by moving people from point A to point B. Then we started adding some delivery services uh, to our offering. But as we were building our ride hailing and delivery services, we started building a lot of deep capability in processing payments in the region. So to date, uh, in fact, not just to date, in the last five years, we have processed more than $5 billion of transactions uh, that are people that are taking ride hailing uh, and, and delivery services on the Kareem platform. Um, in fact, almost eight years ago, uh, when we were launching markets that were quite heavy in cash, we launched a closed loop wallet in the Kareem app where if a customer gives you more money than the, than the trip fare, the extra money gets uh, added to the Kareem wallet and it can be used in the next trip. So we launched this wallet uh, many years ago to uh, make it easy for people to work with uh, cash. And what we're basically doing now is you're basically saying, just like we were simplifying the lives of people with logistics uh, deliveries, can we people simplify people's lives in payments as well? Uh, and what this initiative does, it basically identifies a couple of payment use cases that have been challenging and starts to simplify them, starts to make them very, very easy. And to your question on market size, the market opportunity is quite large, as you would expect. Our estimate is between the different elements, uh, it is about $2.8 trillion opportunity in the region. It's made up of three big things. There is consumer payments. This is all the payments that we send to each other, that we pay our service providers. Then there is international remittance, which is a big opportunity in the region, especially UAE and Saudi are the two largest outbound corridors globally. And the third bucket is financial services and lending. Add them all up. This is $2.8 trillion across the region. And our aspiration is to not focus on this large thing, but start with identifying people's uh, problems with payments and build solutions that makes, make people's lives easier and payment experiences simpler. After that, are you planning to expand in different markets? Absolutely. Uh, so Kareem, uh, as, as we know, has a large footprint all the way from Morocco to Pakistan. And, uh, and the ambition is to launch a service in all of Kareem countries over time. Uh, now, what you see at the next level is there are two types of countries when it comes to payments and financial services. There are countries in the Gulf where you notice a pretty high banking penetration. Uh, most people have bank accounts, most people have debit cards, many people have credit cards as well. And, and the challenges that you're facing and solving in these markets are around making things simpler. Uh, how do we 
make uh, transfers simpler? How do we make it easy for small businesses uh, to accept payments for their services? And then there are other countries, which are countries like Egypt, Morocco, Pakistan, where there's still a large population that is unbanked or underbanked. And what you see in these markets is even the underbanked and unbanked population has very high penetration when it comes to smartphones. So now they have a device in their hands, which can be their conduit to banking services, financial okay. services. And we're also seeing a big increase in e-commerce penetration in these markets. So the opportunity is there. It's quite large. The timing is right. But the type of opportunity is slightly different in those markets versus in the Gulf, where penetration of banking services is quite high. And what's the next market after UAE? So our core markets, uh, focus-wise, uh, UAE is, of course, the country that we're launching in first. Uh, the next market for us is, uh, is of course, Saudi. Uh, it's the largest market, one of our most uh, strategic markets. Many of the things that we're doing in the UAE will, uh, will have to be adapted to the reality of the Saudi market. But we believe that uh, there is still, we have a pretty large ecosystem of mm. partners uh, in Saudi, whether it is customers, captains, and now merchants. We believe that we can actually come up with very compelling solutions that make their lives with payments and financial services a lot simpler than what they are at the moment. How are you planning to compete uh, with banks when it comes to transfers? Uh, and can we see at a later stage cross-border transfers? Yeah, the way that we look at the market, uh, Lara, is uh, it's quite different. We don't see as a, as competing with banks. Uh, we in fact see us as partnering with banks. Uh, and the and the thing that we're going after is reducing the presence of cash in our markets. In almost all our markets, uh, there is a lot of transactions, a lot of business still happening on cash. And as we all know, cash is quite inefficient and has a, a lot of uh, trickle down uh, implications. So we see banks and other fintechs as partners to make people's lives simpler with payments and get more and more payments happening digitally versus cash. Will we see at a later stage cross-border transfers? What are the major obstacles to achieve that? So cross-border transfers are, are definitely on the roadmap uh, at some point. Uh, and as, as you can imagine, if you're focusing on our ecosystem and captains, as you know, are a big part of our ecosystem, uh, we pay them on a daily, weekly basis. And many of the captains, at least in some of our countries, come from other parts of the region. So we do want to make it very easy for them to transfer the money that we put in their wallets as earnings back home to their families in ways that are very, very convenient and cost effective. So cross-border is definitely part of our roadmap. And we will make sure that we make our captains' lives way simpler through that service. And when do we expect that? It's going to happen sometime this year, um, because as you can imagine, there are a lot of uh, regulatory uh, hurdles that need to be crossed. Uh, there's mm -hmm. compliance things that need to be managed. Uh, but like with everything else, uh, we will do it with established players. We'll find the right partner and we'll make sure that we get their strengths, their expertise and our strengths and our expertise to the table and launch something that is going to be a win-win-win, both for us, for them, and of course, for the customers and captains that we'll uh, target this product with. And Monasir, these services will be only available to individuals or also enterprises can use them. Yeah, so in Kareem Pay, Lara, we have two, uh, two separate uh, units. Uh, there is a consumer unit, which is gonna get access to these transfer services, bill payment services, cross-border, as you mentioned over time. But what you realize very quickly is if you want to succeed in the digital wallet business, you need to have an acceptance network for that digital wallet. If the digital wallet cannot be used by people at merchants uh, offline and online that might be outside of our super app, the digital wallet will fail to grow and succeed. So we are uh, working on uh, two solutions, one for online checkout, where we will make it very easy for customers to pay for online services through the Kareem wallet. And there's a solution that we're working on for the offline side as well, where at least our ecosystem uh, will be able to easily accept offline payments and Kareem pay payments uh, when they do business even outside the Kareem Supra.